Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I tell you what, this is a, an honor, a privilege, a delight. I couldn't say more. I've never got to meet Cyrus Parso before until today. But after hearing him over on Stu Peter's program, uh, and one of you, one of our friends there sharing this video with us, I want to thank, I forget who it was that shared it with me too, so I apologize for that. But uh, me and my wife, we really have been thoroughly enjoying. We went, we watched every video he's made thus far, with the exception of the one that he has right now that you, the, the documentary he did, which we're going to watch that tonight. And, uh, and this, this is one of the books that he wrote. All right, so you're gonna have to get more than one. I really encourage you to do so. And you guys know I don't encourage people to buy things, but the AI Trump China and the weaponization of robotics with 5G is something you need to see. Cyrus, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, thank you, Steve, and uh, hello to your audience uh, everywhere. Thank you. Uh, Cyrus, listen, uh, I don't wanna do a whole lot of talking on this other than just throw some things in there because uh, a lot of what you write about with AI, with, with the alien agenda, the things that are going on are things that we've been trying to disclose to people as well. Um, some of that material is over on our Patreon channel uh, because of the, not because of the sensitive nature, just mainly because not everybody is appreciative of the information of knowing uh, where our, where society is headed to. And, uh, you know, and, and, and it's very disturbing. It's happening at an alarming rate. I disclosed recently for, for friends that listen to Israeli News Live that there is coming a disclosure next year that the U.S. has been, in fact, uh, in touch with extraterrestrials. The Nordics are going to be the main group that they're going to be speaking about, but then there's another group that uh, live in our oceans, uh, not mermaids, nothing like that, but the leader of that group claims to be Ra, the sun god of Egypt. And they're going to begin to come on and tell people about how they built the pyramids, how they actually work, which we already know, the government already knows how they work, what the purpose are. There's two of them up and running, including the one in Alaska and the one under the Bermuda Triangle. And, uh, and they're going to disclose that there are creators. They've got a very elaborate plan that's going to roll out in phases through this disclosure project. Uh, and your knowledge, including the robots, everything else. I mean, I knew about our, our the military robots that we have made here in America, and I know we've got over a million of them. And the British government's already bought half a million to replace their police force by 2027, the entire police force. So I don't know where to even tell you to begin, but if you can tell people about yourself, how they can get in touch with you before they in case somebody wanders off a little bit later, let's kind of sure, touch on sure. that. Sure. I, I founded the AI organization. The website is theaiorganization.com. Uh, it specializes on R&D work, research and development on UFO technology, artificial intelligence, 5G, 6G, quantum technology, and of course, the whole internet of things leading to machines and intelligence leading to China, and of course, Iran. I was born in Iran, um, but I support um, all countries. In, in fact, uh, I'm from the US, I've been here for 30 plus years. So I'm an American citizen. And my first country that I have loyalty to is, is America. Um, if you want to get a book, I recommend because AI Trump China and a weaponized digital box 5G is embedded inside of my book published on October 20th Artificial Intelligence Dangers to Humanity. Uh, in that book on page 253 in 2019, I published that an invisible weapon will come to threaten the entire world, to hit President Trump, to knock him out of office so that the uh, liberal elites in China will take over the world and it connects to Marxism. And here in this book cover, you can actually see that. You have President Trump there, the robots, IOTs, people being programmed as algos, smart cities, and then communism. This book is embedded inside of artificial intelligence, danger to humanity. That has the meat of it, the companies and that important thing on paperback, two, page 253. So you should get that. See, how did we detect that he was going to get hit by a year and a half in advance? And even the culprit that was behind the Wuhan lab. Also, because it's hard for people to accept UFOs, I coded language in there. I put coded language in there about UFOs and alien. 
And I describe a little bit in my first few pages. Now, um, after a lockdown happened, just like I said, and the bioweapon did come out, just like I warned. In April 24th, I, I released a movie called AI, The Plan to Invade Humanity, to, to the Pentagon and President Trump. Within three days, the Pentagon released the first UFO files. Then on December 8th, 2020, I, I asked President Trump to declassify the deep state alien agenda, connecting to our big tech and, and nanotechnology and, 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 and different things, so going back many decades. And again, and connected it to my movie, AI, the plan to invade humanity. Yeah, that's correct. That's that's the that's the book, Artificial Intelligence Age to Humanity. That movie there, AI, the plan to invade humanity, it takes you through not just the past 10 to 20 years, but going back almost a hundred years, connecting uh, our big tech companies, uh, DARPA, um, the spawn uh, of all of our technologies, like our smartphones and our IOTs. I said in there that it comes from the landing of these crafts. And then there is actually a global plan that was designed by these aliens that purposely landed here to start a chain of reaction that within a hundred years, our civilization will be engineered so that we, we are dependent on technology and that our minds and our culture are actually uh, controlled or assimilated um, into their way of thinking for their grand plan. And uh, you should watch this movie because it's an hour, it's an hour long. And you may ask how I learned these things. Well, in 2003, I sat, sat down with a very, very special gentleman who'd been uh, researching and had an observ observatory for 30 years. Um, and he was looking at all these crafts and he was giving it to the Pentagon and he had images of many different aliens. And he asked me why certain ones look the way they do and what's their plan. Some of them look like ghosts. So, and I'm like, ghosts, it's very interesting. So I, I, I start researching and I saw a Time article from the founder of, uh, of, uh, of Falun Dafa, Mr. Li Hongzhi. He mentioned that they wanted um, in the future that when people clone, uh, human beings, that God will not give them a soul, and these aliens can enter. So I'm thinking, how can they enter? It's very strange. So I did almost 20 years of R&D, and I did, developed some technologies that can detect these aliens and their, and, their, and their flights. That's why I put out that movie on April 24th. It's because I was detecting these craps coming in and going. And, uh, and I, it was a perfect time because everyone's scared. It was locked down. So I released a movie and the Pentagon dropped theirs. And then when, when I noticed President Trump was no longer going to be in office, I asked him to declassify it on December 8th. And within two weeks, he put it in the COVID bill. And when he did that, they had six months to release it. And on June 25th, they, uh, they put out a little bit of it. They didn't admit that they have aliens, but uh, or they've, they've, they've had aliens in the past and so on. So uh, you'd have to watch the movie, but I connected the AI plan uh, that comes from these aliens to communism and socialism. And for us to no longer be, um, uh, to have belief in God, rather to be controlled and have belief in technology. And this whole master plan that I put in there is that their, their aim is to get us to fight each other or have the instability. And then you come into this Borg system, which is robots, machines, IOTs, Internet of Things, all the satellites come up, and then you have uh, digital quantum tattoos. And then later, they introduce transhumanism and mixed humans and animals, and then they can take over um, culturally, physically, and spiritually um, through many things. So the humanity is extincted physically, culturally, and spiritually because your, your spirit's inside your body and it can be separated in a certain way. I can describe that in, in another interview because it's very deep, but uh, yeah, I may have gone a little too much. Go ahead, sorry. M Mr. Brunum, you don't have uh, audio anymore. Yeah, now we have it. So, yeah. Thank you for letting me know. 
<laughs> anyway, uh, no, I don't want to interrupt too much, but it's just when you're speaking out, these are the things I've seen about, wow, Stu could know some of the things I know. It would draw, it, it'll pull more information from you that you have. And when you talk about the aliens, for example, I'm aware that there's 135 different species that we know of in the government. And I should, I say we, that's not because I work there presently, I don't, but my contacts from when I did, I have that information. And then as you mentioned, like the ghost like there, that's another thing, there's all types. There's some that are in physical bodies, some that look human, some that look very gross, very grotesque, some that live in the ocean, some live in the inner earth, some in the center of the earth, some that do live out in outer space. Just like we have a secret space program, we have a, believe it or not, we actually have a spaceship called the Enterprise uh, that currently is trying to take out asteroids that are trying to hit the earth right now. Uh, and it's almost a, it's a, close to a kilometer long in length with artificial gravity and everything. Secondly, uh, that you mentioned, and I thought I wanted to share this, uh, speak about this because of your knowledge on this, is the soul capturing, for example. The reptilians have been working for quite a long time on how to capture the human soul when it, when it leaves the body. And we've disclosed that information already. So any of those things that you want to speak on, you go right ahead. I'll try to remember not to mute my mic when I come back on next time. I just yes. want to make sure we don't create an echo of your voice. Go ahead, Cyrus. Uh, to concur what you said about the oceans, in the movie AI, The Plan to Invade Humanity, uh, in that I actually show uh, spacecrafts coming out of the ocean. And when the Pentagon viewed it, they said some things that were kind of similar to it in their, in their release. In terms of taking the soul out of the body, there's multiple ways. I, I don't want to describe it in too detail because then our big tech guys will be able to learn how to do it. And, and I don't want to um, disclose that. But you, you can say it, it involves bioengineering. It also invo involves certain machines and technology that they would have to create. And then once they do that, uh, they can have come out. But also there's another way. If you um, culturally and spiritually are controlled, then at some point when you're bioengineered, your spirit will no longer connect to your body as strong in a strong way. Then they can download themselves to, into your body. It's kind of like possession. If you look at um, the ancient fates and Zoroastrianism, if you look at... Uh, uh, e even uh, in Israel and in the Jewish practices, if you look at uh, uh, in the Judeo-Christian, if you look at the Falun Dafa, if you look at the Tibetans, e even the Muslims in Iran, different places, they talk about being possessed or being influenced. So these reptilians, uh, they're not just reptilians. There, there, there was ones that looked gray. So the movie I made, um, I chose a gray figure because a lot of the ones that fly here with their crafts are like that. But there are re other reptilians as well. However, there are ones that look ghost-like, and I've seen those, uh, multiple different ones. Uh, there's one uh, that looks ghost-like. It's like the color of paper white, and they have black eyes, and they have no body hair, and they're short. And there are other ones. There are very tall ones. Um, they're probably like seven foot tall and they're completely white and they have bald hair, but they shine. There's a glow to them. Uh, my technology is detected this. So th there's like a, um, a white aura that's around them and it glows, but they're not, they're sinister, they're not good. And they, these are ghost-like. That means they don't have our physical bodies here in our dimension. They're in a different dimension, but through avatars. So when I sat down with a gentleman in 2003, um, you know, he's the one that helped the Pentagon to build um, their, uh, their, their craft that they're, they're working on in a way that it can create a force field that so the faster it goes, there's no resistance against it. The, the force field will, will open up and go behind the craft and push forward. So that means it can almost go through the 
past the speed of light in a sense in the future. So this has to do with quantum technology as well, but he gave a lot of technology up to the Pentagon and his observatory was first class. So he wanted to know why these, these aliens look ghost-like. And I concluded that there's multiple reasons. Some of them are ghost-like and they, through virtual reality and augmented reality, they, they control physical machines, you see? Um, so that's how they can control our physical machines. But also through avatars, some of these spacecrafts that come here, there's just an avatar inside. So the avatar is being remotely controlled through an AI system that's been deprogrammed or previously programmed, or it's being uh, controlled uh, manually at certain times when they go to different places. So when a craft co comes here and there's no one inside of it, it's because it was uh, on a scout mission and they were using avatar to control it. Now, when our Pentagon or our military finds crafts and there's actually aliens inside in the past, that's different. They, those have a physical body. There's more than 32, as they say, or 132. I've actually never sat down to read other people's things and because people talk about different names to aliens. Um, I've just looked at artifacts going back you know, a few thousand years. I've read the ancient books um, that are coded inside in the books, talking about, talking about aliens. I've read the current books, the book of Genesis, book of Enoch, um, uh, the Faladafa book, the Tibetan books, um, Bhagavad Gita, and of course, uh, even the Persian book Rumi. He's got coded language in there talking about aliens. You'd have to really think deep, then you would know, oh yeah, he's in there talking about this. So even the Arabs, when they talk about the jinn, very, very, it's very similar. So, and then I use my technology. I develop a certain technology that the Pentagon does not have. You just Google have it. So I can detect at certain points when these aliens come and go and what they're doing and what their plans were and how they were doing things. Because they've been manipulating the entire humanity to go against each other, especially during the past couple of years for their long-term grant uh, plan of transhumanism. So I really recommend everyone sit down, watch this movie, AI, The Plan to Debate Humanity. It actually made history. It contributed in getting our Pentagon to um, declassify a lot of things. That's exciting to, to hear. And again, uh, those of you, I just, I wanna make sure you see this here. Um, first, when you see it, you'll see the book, but uh, once that, the thing to lift up for me, I can show you the movie there. You definitely want to see this uh, AI, the plan to invade humanity. Uh, and we'll put that, it's on Vimeo. I'll put that in the in the description below for you. So you guys will be able to see that as well, uh, or be able to watch that for yourself. Um, one thing too, that, that you mentioned in your book uh, that we were speaking about just briefly a second ago, uh, and I know we're jumping around, so we may end up having to do two or three interviews because, uh, Cyrus, there's so much information you have. And I really, I, I feel that it's vital that people hear the inform the, the, this information uh, because the, the agenda is very real. Uh, it was probably a year ago that I really began to recognize in my own mind that the agenda that's coming is very sinister. It's been thought out for, for literally decades uh, in advance and what their plans are, uh, how they're planning on taking over. And But you had mentioned in your book specifically here, I've got one section here, I'll just kind of so people can see this here, talking about the AI robots and uh, that they're making. And I know that uh, from the sources that I have in the government, that as I mentioned earlier on in the broadcast, the British government, because they have a zero tolerance for weapons, they're going to deploy in, in the robot soldiers to be able to be policemen. People don't realize they're not maybe as refined in their looks, but in their abilities, their agilities, uh, they can run, they can shoot, they do not miss their target within a nanosecond. They can determine if you're a life, uh, life threat or just not as bad a threat. 
whether or not they shoot you in the heart or shoot you in the leg type of deal. Uh, but because the British doesn't have a weapons issue, they're going to start deploying these by 2027. And if they approve to be effective, they're going to replace their entire police force. We've also uh, believed that with so many law enforcement resigning, and we're not going to go into that issue why, we'll just say because of the mandate that's being pushed on a global scale, which should make people think to begin with. If you're pushing a mandate on a global scale, since when do all world governments agree on anything, right? So yes. at any rate, uh, they're planning on, uh, you know, these, these law enforcement uh, people are, are quitting, but they don't realize they've already got your replacement. They don't care if you resign. Cyrus, your thoughts? Uh, that's exactly uh, my point here. Everything is going to be replaced with robots, machines, Internet of Things, virtual augmented mixed reality, and then connects to satellites. So um, even in the book, you, you see it. I put images of a robot pointing, pointing at people, going, you, go over here. And I sit in there on the book, Artificial Intelligence to Humanity, in the first, I think, 15, 20 pages, said that, um, that AI will tag people of faith as resistant to AI. So if you don't comply with any mandate that they would have in this global uh, system, um, you have a social media that can um, tell you what to do, that they can be enforced with military or robots and drones. That's why you, you also, when you watch AI to plan to invade humanity, you will see the entire grand picture. I showed you in the next 10 or 20 years. In terms of technology, you mentioned, correct. There is a company called McVay Face Plus Plus also known as Kuangshu, which is Chinese. And initially, this company uh, was just a facial recognition company. So it sees your face and knows your emotions and knows sort of um, what your likes and dislikes are, if you're afraid or if, how you can be manipulated through different, um, different scanning methods that it have. Uh, also can look at your skeleton. It can look at um, your internal organs, like an MRI almost, um, and it has deep learning. So then it became an artificial intelligence company. So its facial recognition started to become an, powered by artificial intelligence. So the artificial intelligence is guiding and assessing uh, people's faces then their bodies through po different postures, through gaze, through skeleton, to uh, certain move they will make in their face, to even read their thoughts. Then they bought a robotics company. See, so first facial recognition, then it learns how to look at your body. Then they, uh, they become an AI company that powers that. Then they buy a robots uh, company. So they start buying robots, uh, warehouses all over China. At the beginning, it's like all oh, serving robots, right? But behind the scenes, they're building military. And then they start, uh, so what they did, what McVay did in China, and this was verified by Trump administration and the Biden administration currently, um, that McVay Face Plus Plus technology was used in the concentration camps uh, to first detect uh, people of faith and put them in the camps and see if they're resistant. So this included um, the Falun Dafa practitioners, the Uyghurs, the Tibetans, the house Christians, and more. So my warning, my call to the world is you're being tagged now, this has been my call for the past two, three years. Um, why wouldn't this stuff be used against you, the world's people? Whether if you're in Iran, you're in Israel, you're in America, you're anywhere in the world. And you say, it's kind of weird, Cyrus, but you read the book. I talk about the BRI, Belt and Road Initiative. This connects China to the Middle East, to, to Iran, and to Europe, and so on. So because China is a communist country, they don't believe in anything uh, that's beyond what the technology can show them. They're, they're atheists. And they're known to persecute people of faith, even Muslims. Um, so uh, because they're dealing with Iran, Iran is an Islamic country, but then they're doing business with, with a country that puts people in concentration camps, kills them with organs. So why wouldn't, why wouldn't um, the Chinese regime, when they built this, these 5G, 6G towers, they built the infrastructure, why wouldn't they enslave not just Iran, but even Israel? Do you see? Why not, if not just Israel, why wouldn't they enslave the African peoples? 
because the BRI connects to Africa through Huawei, and the 5G, 6G systems. They have built uh, surveillance systems and they have put in, dumped a lot of money in uh, so that they have entrapped everyone in that country, all the major uh, leaders into their uh, uh, business model. Then the digital system comes in with Bitcoin, different things. So that means China can control the world. And then when this entire structure comes in, you watch my movie, AI Don't Climb to Evade Humanity, it shows you the aliens are manipulating everybody. And they're, they're manipulating the Communist Party to, 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 to get together with maybe Russia and definitely with, with, with Iran. And then the, the, in the, in the West to kind of like start transhuman stuff. And then they would lead to an end game, which is the extinction of, of billions of people. And they would take over. But to do that, you have to first destroy people's spirits. When you do that and they don't believe in God and they don't have the ethics and spiritually, then they're no longer protected by the creator of the universe, by God, because you have to follow um, certain moral ethical guidelines. Um, I mean, it, you look at the book, it says that, right? So um, it, this is um, the master plan that I've shown here. There's another one I, I put out called um, CVAI Global Master Plan. That's a theory, theory I put out in, in July, but that was an explanation of my movie, AI, the plan to many, many. So the work we've done is maybe hard to accept for people, but me and my team, we have done it on behalf of your families. I've warned everywhere that the bioweapon was, co was coming was to save your families. Um, if, you, if you don't believe that it was that dangerous, it actually was. But if you didn't like to ha uh, you had to endure wearing a mask and, and different things, I was working on your behalf and your family's behalf. So I, I really thank you, uh, Steve, for having the courage to have me on because my, my goal was um, altruistic. And if whether if you're in Israel or if you're in Iran or Saudi Arabia or if you're in the U.S., if you're a human being, we support you. Yes, absolutely. And we appreciate it as well. The, the, you mentioned several things I just want to uh, touch on. And, and if you want to go deeper, you can. It's up to you, Cyrus. The One Belt, One Road initiative, we really hammered that, especially a, a couple of years ago or a few, maybe three years ago now. Uh, I got a message from uh, a good friend of mine in the Mossad, and he said to me, the Israeli government wants you to keep your mouth shut about the Chinese and the One Belt, One Road initiative. And, uh, and so I asked him, I said, why? I said, you can tell what the plan is. I said, isn't it interesting the United States is not part of that One Belt, One Road initiative? And uh, he said, well, we're done with America. He said, China will be the next world superpower. He said, this is why we're working with the Chinese. And then I began to go back, Cyrus, and I realized, wow, this is why so many of our major corporations back in the late 80s, early 90s, were moving their manufacturing processes to China. They knew what was coming for the future. They knew the power structure that they had to build. And of course, any good businessman that knows where the new world order system is going to, to be, have its foundation economically, militarily, is going to put their business there to be able to prosper as it grows. All right. So that's one thought. Another thing, too, I was going to mention to you, and this is way off in another field, but, uh, but it's going back to some of the uh, maybe even to the soul transference ideology there. We went to war in Iraq not for what most people think. And I don't know what you may know on this, Cyrus. It wasn't for oil. It wasn't because of 9-11. It was actually because Saddam Hussein made an announcement that they had found the tomb of Nimrod. And of course, we already had the CERN project going. We actually, people don't know it, but we have six of them that actually exist on the planet. Uh, two of them in America, one in Antarctica, of course, the one in Europe. And I'm not sure where the other ones are. I just, those are the ones that I'm aware of. And uh, in Nimrod's tomb, we knew that there were things that would decipher uh, what we needed to go multidimensional, kind of like what Nimrod's plan was to begin with. He's going to build a tower that reaches up into heaven. He wasn't talking about a building with bricks in it either, as the Bible puts it. He was talking about going to another dimension. And we knew this from some ancient documents that are not made public that we'd found about Nimrod. We also knew that Nimrod, there was a secret library in the Sphinx Paw and that it has the information in there. Uh, and of course, our thought was in America is that if we could get the body of Nimrod back, 
and we could re-put his spirit back in that body, he's the only one that could get into the foot of the Sphinx, decode the information, and this is also dealing with the agenda of the alien takeover. We did get his body, we got the technology, and his body is currently underneath uh, Colorado Springs Airport uh, is where it is now. I know the scientists that were involved, most of them believe that this was an impossibility, but some of the physicists that I know say they believe that it has been a success. Can you elaborate on any of these things that you might know of, Cyrus? First thing you mentioned, um, Israel doing business uh, with the Communist Party of China. I want to tell them, if you're listening, if you're an Israeli, if you're a Jewish person, um, if you're an Iranian person or you're in Iran, doing business with the Communist Party of China will, end, will lead to the destruction of Iran and Israel, the Israeli people and the Iranian people. Doing business with China while they have concentration camps will lead to the destruction of the Israeli people, the Israeli families, the Iranian people, and the Iranian families. You need to stop. What happened uh, in, in the 1940s uh, during the Holocaust, right? What happened? So if you're doing business with a country that has slaughtered tens of millions of own people in the past 20 years in concentration camps, and those people were put in camps, organ harvested, and killed for the organs, and even build your goods, and the government and, and the tech people that you're doing business with lead to that to varying degrees. It also leads to complicity in genocide and, um, and so many different things. Um, Nuremberg laws. Uh, so, and for the, for the Iranian government, Iranian people, they don't respect you. They don't, res they don't respect your faith. They don't respect your period. I, you know, most of my, uh, my employees, people who work with me are actually Chinese and um, they're, they're not for communism. But so I implore every every person, whether you're American, Israeli, or Iranian, to complete the couple, renounce, seek redemption, but also expose the Chinese Communist Party. If you do business with China or any, any uh, Chinese uh, entity, it links back to the Chinese government and the Communist Party. So it's not good for you. Now, if you don't believe and ethics, you just don't want to do it. You, you don't believe in in in, uh, in 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 law. Then maybe you believe you know what comes around goes around. Karma, as, as the Eastern Buddhists say, right? So why is the world facing what it is today? Why uh, are all these bad things happening? I, I said that I found extinction codes for a lot of people. 2019, my books. So I said, a bioweapon will hit, then uh, it, everything will be uh, locked down, people will be enslaved, machines will come in, then it will lead to extinction, including wars and famines. So if maybe uh, some people don't believe in what comes around, goes around. Well, maybe you believe in a soul. So if you, if you, if you care about your soul, don't do business with, with China, as long as they have the Communist Party. Now, if you don't believe in soul, well, then it, maybe you believe in law. If you don't believe in that, it's not good for you. This is what I have to tell you. So in terms of, um, um, you, met, you mentioned the body they found. I'm not too uh, aware of that. But um, in terms of what they have in Colorado, because I, ha I haven't looked inside of our what our Pentagon has. I don't. I don't look into classified things that our country has. Only the Chinese Communist Party, and and some other things um, that relates to just UFOs. So what I look at is I detect these crafts. I detect the worlds that are coming from by using certain technology, and I also detect their physical bodies and I detect their movements and what they're thinking, what they're doing. So uh, in terms of a few thousand years ago, yes, all of this is from ancient civilization as well. Some of these aliens are flying back here or actually uh, maybe were here before in a previous civilization. That's why you see the artifacts. If you go to summer, uh, even Persepolis or even places uh, in Israel and Iran and, 
and even Far East, you'll find remnants, um, and even in India, uh, remnants of pure source civilization of crafts that relate to um, not humanoids, but looks like a mix of between humans and animals. So now they're mixing humans and animals in labs all over the world, especially in China. So uh, the entire thing comes to the B system. Here's the main thing everyone needs to know. In, a, in every ancient faith and in every religion and every spiritual practice and even sort of in science as well and culturally, they all say you are made in the image of the creator. You are special. So these aliens want this, want your bodies in the future. And they will use technology to do that. Or they want you to separate from God. And you say, well, why were we here? Why are we in heaven? Well, in every faith, it also says that this is a test. You have been put here for salvation, for enlightenment or awakening. And everything is a test for you, whether you're suffering, uh, whether you have doubt or if you have fear, and you're supposed to put these things down. Fear, anger, jealousy, even lust, as you say, and different things. And the closer you are to God or the universe, however you want to put it, um, the better off you are. So the purpose of being a human being, as many, many um, faiths put it, is to achieve salvation, enlightenment, or awakening. Or as maybe the left will say, uh, have your consciousness ascend, and so on. So my technology has detected even the soul where it exists in the human body. So that's all I have to say for now. If you want to follow me on, uh, on Twitter, you can as well, on Gitter and um, Telegram. It's Cyrus, A-P-A-R-S-A-1. Again, the website's T-H-E-A-I-Organization.com. And um, the movie is AI, The Plan to Evade Humanity. And the book is Artificial Intelligence Danger to Humanity. I, I don't know if you have any last comments or, or question. I would love to come back on for a second episode. Um, and yeah, uh, thank you very much yes. to audience and to you. Thank you, Cyrus, for joining us today. And listen, guys, you guys have some homework. We're going to try to get Cyrus to come back with us next week. But your homework is to go. And I want you to watch this movie uh, I'm going to watch it today, uh, so I'm not going to wait any longer. I know when I saw it, I wanted to watch it that one night, but my wife wasn't ready, so I had to kind of wait, and uh, I'll kind of just let the trailer of this play for a second so you get a little, little touch of this here, but I want you guys to watch this so that when we get Cyrus on the end of next week, I'll go ahead and pre-plan pre that with him, with his staff there, and uh, but and we're going to really come together. I'll get Yana to be on the interview with me as well. We're going to have some amazing questions for Cyrus. I'll give those to him in advance. And then that way, you guys will be a little bit better equipped. You'll know more about what's going on. Uh, and uh, because this is a real agenda. And I don't, this is not just entertainment. So please understand that. I didn't have Cyrus come on for entertainment. I have him to come on because I believe that he's got a very serious, very important message for you that is something that we need in the coming days. And one thing I'll say as well, uh, just in closing here, Cyrus also believes, uh, you want to call aliens fallen angels, Nephilim, which the Nephilim would be the children of them. I know next time we'll go into the hybrids, things like that. In fact, I was just, I haven't disclosed this yet, but I was just speaking to a friend of mine in Washington recently, and we were talking about the hybrids, and he said that he's been there where the hybrids, he said, almost like bodies on meat hooks, like in a, in a, in a factory, so to speak, of cows, when they've been cleaned. He said he was in there, and there was a, a body, a, a hybrid body already made for a major. Uh, he said the major has no idea that there's a clone of him sitting in a warehouse. In fact, he's seen that major not long after that. And he only wondered why had they made a clone for him? What do they know about his life that they're going to exchange it? Bill Clinton is a clone. Uh, he, he actually died while he was president and they moved his body over into the clone. 
Uh, we've shared that with you guys before. So anyway, and I know Cyrus knows so much about these subjects. Cyrus, thank you for joining us. If you have any closing points, please share that with us there. And we'll look forward. I'll get with Jill uh, to set this up for next week. And we'll send you in advance some of the questions that we'll want to talk about too. Uh, as we get to study more about what your information is, watch more of your interviews so that that way we can really, because my wife is orderly, we'll put it together in a very concise interview there that can really benefit the people too. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'd like to know the, the response of the audience from AI, the Plan to Evade Humanity movie uh, and the book. And if you can share uh, my story of how we warned of the bioweapon and the Great Reset starting in 2019 and the enslavement. And this will lead to uh, much evidence to free your families. It's very important. My story has been purposely in a coordinated way hidden. Thank you. Yes, and we will do that as well. And uh, guys, I wanna share one more time uh, the screen here of the book. This is the book that you need to be able to get. Let me pop that up on the screen here for you. It's on Amazon, so it makes it very simple to get. Artificial Intelligence, Dangerous to Humanity. I'm going to order this book as soon as we get off the air. Uh, and also, too, you know, not many people do, but after you read the book, if you appreciate it, write a review. Write a review about what you think about uh, the book as well. And uh, because we need to get people educated because we're about to go into some serious issues, very serious issues coming up. Anyway, thank you guys for listening. Thank you, Cyrus, for being on with us today. And God bless all of you for being with us. God bless. Thank you. Uh